Yeah, there's a lot going on, and the Middle East is front and center. What Linda said is right. Um, I believe we're inside the 10-yard line and driving toward the goal line and getting an agreement that would produce a ceasefire, get the hostages home, and put us on a better track to trying to build lasting peace and stability. And, and I say we're inside the 10-yard line. We are. Now, we also know that with anything, the last 10 yards are often the hardest. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to be um, in any way naive about uh, it, but we have an agreement to the framework the President put out by both uh, Israel and Hamas. The question now is finishing the negotiation of some critical details that well, are important. Well, and that Hamas hasn't signed on, have they? Well, much? no, they signed on to the framework, right, and that's what's they... so important. But there remain some, some issues that need to be resolved, that need to be uh, negotiated. We're in the midst of doing exactly that, is to make sure that there's a clear uh, plan for what follows, the so-called day after plan. Because what we can't have is this. Uh, what we can't have is an agreement that's followed by some kind of void yeah. that will either be filled, if it's there, by Hamas coming back, which is unacceptable, by Israel um, prolonging its occupation of Gaza, which they say they don't want to do and is unacceptable, or just having uh, a vacuum that's filled by lawlessness, that's filled by chaos, uh, which we see in so many parts of Gaza right now which is also inimical to actually helping people who desperately need it. Between so, Gaza and the West Bank, there are somewhere over 5 million Palestinians. There are about 7 million Israeli Jews. Um, neither is going anywhere. Palestinians are not going anywhere. The Jews are not going anywhere. There has to be an accommodation, but an accommodation that does two things. That brings lasting peace and lasting security to Israelis who so desperately want it and need it, and fulfills the right to self-determination of the Palestinians. Now, with any right comes responsibility. Responsibility to build a state that would not be a threat uh, to Israel, uh, that won't be a Hamas stand. The two strongest opponents of a two-state solution, who are they? Iran and Hamas. Uh, so the strongest possible rebuke to both Iran and Hamas would be the realization of two states. At every step along the way in the history of this, you go back to the Oslo Accords. Who tried to disrupt the Oslo Accords? Hamas. When the Arabs launched the Arab Peace Initiative uh, and were moving toward recognition of Israel, who unfortunately effectively disrupted that? Hamas. <laughs>